Good. Good. Sorry, I'm running on time. Um, we um, we actually had a planning commission meeting that started at 4:30 and it was still going on. So um, so I didn't want to disappoint you. So uh, I believe they were going to table the uh, the information anyway. So here I am uh, without the projector. So we're going to talk first. Um, and, uh, and then I'll go over the state of the city. So I, I'm sure you're all very interested in that. So how you doing? <laughs> okay. Nobody's talking. Okay, well, um, first I'll talk about, um, I'll talk about what actually happened with um, the legends. And, the debacle that we've had the last 18 months. Uh, would you all consider it a debacle? Yes. <laughs> yes, I have as well. So, see if we agree on something right away. Yeah. Um, what happened, and I brought some paperwork for you so that you would all see. What happened was a council member uh, wanted me to put in Doug Nist right away as the director. And I knew where Doug came from, and I felt that Doug needed a little more time working on the budget. And so I decided not to put him in as the official director. I wanted him to be interim director. Do you all remember that? None of you remember that. Okay, so I wanted Doug to be interim director so he had the opportunity to work with our budget director so I would make sure he's up to speed before we let him go. And a council member decided that they didn't like that, that they wanted him as the director no matter what. Um, I disagreed with that. And so uh, we worked with him a little bit until they decided they were gonna put major pressure on us to hire him officially, uh, which we did. And But we were very concerned about him as our leader of the Parks Department because it's not only of our Parks Department, it's also the Rec Center, it's also the Legends. That's a big job, and you need to make sure someone can handle it. Um, so Council really uh, decided that they wanted him in as Parks Director, we did that. Then they decided that they wanted to control the hire and fire of the Parks Director. Do you all remember that? Nobody remembers that. Okay, so they created legislation, which I vetoed, um, and I have the letter here that I wrote when I vetoed it, because the mayor should be in charge of the parks director, period. But instead, uh, in this letter, they wrote out the mayor in every paragraph and put in council, every paragraph. And if you'd like to see it, I have two copies, and I'll be happy to let you see that. And why I vetoed it, the letter is right on top, so you can see why I vetoed it, which didn't stand, and I knew it wouldn't stand. So, um, so anyway, uh, at that point, uh, council and the count, uh, the park board members were then in charge of the parks department and the legends and the rec center. And so we all believed that for about 18 months, and then sometime in January this year. The law director stood up and said, nothing has changed, the mayor's in charge. Do you all remember that? I was ill that night, I wasn't there when he made that statement. So I emailed him from that time on, and you're welcome to see my emails, please respond, please respond. I need to know what the mayor is actually in charge of. No answer, no answer, no answer, phone calls, no answer. And finally, I sent him the ORC that says, you must respond to the mayor. You must. <clears throat> so the same day, I get a letter saying, there's no change, you are, you are in charge. That could have happened 18 months ago. It did not. Hence the debacle that we've had the past 18 months. Um, the mayor wants to be in charge. The mayor uh, has always wanted to be in charge. Uh, but council wanted to take that away from me. Um, and so, now today, as of, I believe it was March the 20th, and I'll pass this around as well. I just wanna make sure I get everything back because this is the original, and um, I do wanna get this back. But this says that the mayor's in charge as of March the 20th. 
Um, and I think that's a very important document that we have. So we have been busy. Last week I hired a new safety service director, uh, Joel Smith, which he's on his way here. You'll get to meet him tonight. He's retired from the Ohio State Highway Patrol. And we met today with Bernie and Carrie and Lisa Benton, and we are working hard to turn this legends around. Um, and so that's, I guess, what I wanted to talk about after I did the State of the City, but we'll talk about that now. So what does that mean? We believe that the, this legends can make money. And we believe that if it's managed properly, and right now I'm, I told Bernie and Carrie, I will be micromanaging this area from now on. Uh, now that I know that I'm in charge. And the only way, according to lawyers, uh, that that will change is if someone challenges it by, through the courts. Uh, once the law director opines, uh, I stay in charge unless someone wants to fight about it and now have to go to court um, because the law director has given his opinion. So that's how it's going to be from here on out. And um, we're going to work with Bernie and Carrie um, there are a lot of things we can do to improve the legends. There are a lot of activities we can do to improve the legends, and that's our plan. So uh, if you have suggestions, we want to hear them. Uh, we sat down today, we're meeting again on Monday with Bernie and Carrie uh, to talk about, they come from a private uh, golf course. They have great experience, and they know how to pinch a penny and make money. And we're going to utilize their knowledge and their experience to help us do that. Any questions about that? I have a question. Sure. So, um, 18 months ago is when there was a lot of confusion on the golf course. Prior to that, you were in office. So, I know the Park and Rec oversees the golf course. And I know, I believe there's four members appointed by you. Um, three members. Three members appointed, appointed by you to run the Park and Recs, which oversees the golf course and we know they're not in favor of the golf course. So I guess my question to you is, why did it take so long to get the legend as a priority to make oh. it work? Well, it's I been guess. a priority for me all along. I just was told I wasn't in charge. And I had a lunch with Perry and Michelle Dario Keller, and Perry told her then that I wouldn't be in charge if they went forward doing that. So I don't know where the change of heart was, the change of their mindset. Uh, honestly, it must have come uh, January and February this year, because you found out about it before I did. I got the phone call saying, uh, the law director stood up tonight and you're in charge. Hmm. But, but yes, the Park and Rec Board never approves anything for the rec. How are you so, going to handle the yeah. Parks and Rec Board? Because they have said, you read the minutes, we visit meetings, you didn't show up, I guess, last Thursday. I had a funeral. Yeah. But they, they will sit there and say they will vote for nothing. Well, they will wave their hands at us. How are you going to control that? Well, um, I had one of the park board members here today, and he's the chairman, and he's willing to work with us. Why? So, Why suddenly is he willing to work? You're talking about um, David Bob Gallagher. Gallagher. Oh, David Gallagher. But isn't he the one that has missed the meetings? Uh, I'm not sure how many meetings he's missed. I've heard that. Um, according to their bylaws, he is no longer allowed to sit. I mean, that's what their bylaws state. So how are we going to deal with that? Yeah. I was told that you refused to replace him. Is that true? No, I. Okay. Nobody even that's, asked me to replace him. Okay. Him. No, well, he should be replaced. That's not true. Well, he, but he has bylaws. a professional job, and it doesn't um, matter. Their bylaws state yeah. that if they meet, miss three meetings, and he missed January, February, and March. That's three. Now he was there at this last meeting. That, that, I'm just saying, I mean, you're meeting with him, that's fine. However, he really shouldn't even be sitting there. So, well, but he is. He's there. And But you're uh, missing my point. No, I understand. Yeah, so I understand he missed the meetings, but he's there. And um, he shouldn't be. He should, there, nobody's he should pushed to have him removed or even talk to me about it. I think I brought it up at the city council meeting while you were there. But there, there's no way to remove him. Show me how to remove him. <clears throat> They're bylaws. Bylaw specifically state, and it's a recommendation by the High Revised Code, that should anyone miss three meetings yeah. within, a, within a year, they are ineligible to serve on the board. That's Does it what say they must by, be removed? No, I don't know. it says they are ineligible to serve. Well, then we'll have to take a look at it. Yeah. I mean, that's, but that's my question. So yeah. having him, 
being agreeable might be a moot point because he may no longer be eligible to sit on that board. What are you going to do about Mr. Hickey and Mr. Wolf? Well, you know, we need to talk with them and see if there's a contention, though, and that, that's what I, I try to keep, ex, try to explain to all of you. Uh, you know, when the debt, and I explained that to Bernie and Carrie today, when the debt came out of the general fund, it wasn't a big deal. It came out of the general fund. But now that it's coming out of the park and rec, and they have 30 parks to take care of, now it, they feel that that's their duty as a park board member to worry about all the parks in the city. That's how they Isn't feel. Is this a park, though? It's not a park. Okay. No, no. This is a, a golf course, okay. and, and I don't consider it a park. Okay. But that's how, and I'm just trying to explain how they feel. Um, you know, I think this is a wonderful asset. I think it's an expensive asset as well. I would not have negotiated the contract the way they did. I wouldn't have done that. But that's in the past, and we have to move forward. And that's what I think we need to do, is move forward. I agree. So, I agree. But my concern, my big concern on this is how you're going to manage those men. I've been I'm, in many meetings, and yes. it is it's, I it's you. disgraceful. Well, you know so, what, I think there's been a lot of um, tension back and forth. And, um, you know, we're going to change the format also of the park board meetings. They are going to be more professional, more respectful on both sides, on both sides. Because I know you all have emotions, and they do too. And so what we need to do is listen to one another. Just listen. And, it's and really truly, important. The, the meetings that I've been to with men, when citizens have spoke, they have not been disrespectful. They really have not. And, and where the problem came was back, there was a 45-minute dissertation by someone in the public, 45 minutes about shutting this place down. And from there, it was like it went downhill. Yeah. And they do, they, they're they terrible. Well, and that, I would tell you, that's a responsibility of council, creating this legislation to take the mayor out, and that's what you ended up getting. And I'm not sure, and I don't know, but that's fine, but if, if they're not going to respect what the council tells them. It's supposed to be that at that point they thought was in charge of them. Why are they going to listen to you? That's what I'm trying to get through. Why would they listen to you? They don't listen to anybody. Well, uh, they did today. So well, one did. And I've talked to the other two. I've and so now the they've two. had a change of no, heart. No, no, I'm not saying a complete change oh. of heart. Okay. I'm trying to reason with them because they, you know, I understand that you've all worked very hard for your homes. I get that. I understand that some of you have worked very hard for your retirement and you're re retired here. I understand that. Um, we want to maintain your pr property values. We want to do that. Um, well, and even so, taking my property values out of it, I well, mean, this, to, to, this golf course can make, you said it yourself, can I think it can make money. money. I do. But they don't seem to believe that. Well, because they're saying it's never going to make enough to pay the debt. It's not. It's okay. not going to make enough and, to pay the debt. And regarding the debt, am I correct? That debt is not 100% this golf course. Is that correct? It's, a, it's a multitude of things. That's what I thought. Yes. But they seem to want to blame the golf course. No. Yeah. No. Okay. No. And so what we're trying to do, and now that I know that I am in charge mm -hmm. and that uh, it's going to stay that way, then now you get to work with me. And so... Um, uh, what I can say is that I want to make this profitable. Now, it's not going to pay the debt that we have. It's not. But it's a start. And there are, for instance, Lisa had an egg hunt out here. Did anyone participate in that, the egg hunt? It was an adult egg hunt. It was amazing. And so there are more things that we can do, and that's what we all need to do with all of you, is brainstorm on what do you want to see out here? How can we improve it? I know Bernie and Carrie told me today, uh, the, uh, the uh, parking lot really needs done and the uh, cart paths need yes. done. And um, in order to market and recruit more golfers here, you know, we've got to invest some money into that golf course. And that's going to be my job to get our uh, park board members to support that. And that'll be my job. Do you think it would be feasible to hire, as they suggested, a I know these two are back here as part time, and they've got a wealth of experience and knowledge. But one person in charge. I mean, obviously, you're a very busy person. You do not have time to. I'm I'm making time, uh, and we're no, we're not going to spend sixty five thousand dollars. We're not going to do that. Uh, Carrie and Bernie are amazing, uh, 
and they're going to run this uh, like a machine. And we're all going to, I've got the budget director here on Monday that's going to be working with Bernie and Carrie. They, they've never even understood their budget. So we're going to sit down and talk about their budget. We're going to talk about profit and loss on different events, which we talked about today. So uh, we are going to micromanage this until I'm satisfied. And then I'll let it go to Bernie and Carrie. But for now, that's what's going to happen. Yes, sir. It's good. Do you have a faith that you Right now. The school board does, yes, sir. Okay. Do you have any influence with the school board? I pro could probably tell Rick Goodright, and what I have suggested to him is to get someone from this area. But someone has to apply. Excuse me, my husband has gone to every school board meeting and applied, and nobody will even return his phone calls. Okay. So don't, they can't say nobody's asked. He has asked numerous times. And he's talked to council and, and let council know too. He's let everybody he can think of know, but don't give us the time of day. Okay. And it's not a priority to them. It's not. Uh, they would soon as well not even do it. They don't want to have a part in that. Uh, but because of the way it was set up, they are charged with it. So uh, they'd rather give it up to, to the city. And they, they really need to focus on educating our students. So, yes, sir. I want to compliment you because I think you're an outstanding politician. And on that note... Okay, I'm going to stop you right there because it's not going to be negative, okay? It's not going to be negative, but you're asking us to have your confidence, and this is right before an election. I understand why. But the fact of the matter is, actions speak louder than words. You were the one that introduced, and it was a big deal in the paper. What's, what's your name, sir? Joe. You're Joe Blue? Right. Okay, great. You're nice the one that again. introduced the water park people. There's a big spread in the paper. You were taking them to city council. You took them to walk the board. You're the one that introduced it. Yes. The object was to sell off part of the golf course, sell off all the golf course, whatever the plan was. Yeah. Now we're supposed to have this big trust affair that things are different that you have really high confidence level in this facility. Whereas you wanted to sell it off a no, year ago. No, that you know what here's the thing, Mr. Blue. Um, that opportunity came to us and I would do that again today. If somebody came and said, This is what's a multi million dollar project, this is what we want to do in Masson, you have to vet it. And what we found out very quickly was they didn't have the money. But you have to take those risks. You have to. You have uh, the to former mayor it. took in a risk on oh, the arena, lost a million dollars, but they took the risk. You have to take risk in my position. You need to vet it before you try to rush it through no. legislation. No, no we, had to, we had to see. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Blue. Those people had no business I, plan. I they had with no you. money. I disagree with you. They, um, they came, and uh, we had to see what let them play their cards, and that's what we did. I would do what million today. dollars did the city lose on the arena? There's a grant. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, the million dollars was the infrastructure for what the theater net theater is and the rec center. No, there, there's so. a grant. They lost it. Anything else about the legends? Yes, sir. Matt Creamer, 2040 Augusta. Um, after your PowerPoint, are we allowed to ask other questions concerning the golf course and the residents down here, Madam Mayor? Sure. And as long as they're respectful, I'm, yeah. I'm at your disposal. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm a citizen down here. I've lived here for 20 years, and I was appalled at the last park board meeting, which was last week that I spoke at, um, with the park board members. And Mr. Wolf, who's appointed by the school board, not by you, is that correct, Mr. Wolf? I believe Mr. Wolf was, yes. Yeah. Um, had stated that he was ashamed of city council and the administration of the city because they didn't care about the safety of the children in Mass, and that they cared, us cared more about the golf course because of the cutting down of the trees. And I really think that he needs to be educated before he makes that statement against you as a city administrator and the lead of the council and the council because I don't think any council member or yourself would deter anything with safety against kids. I think that they're uneducated 
and they make decisions because out of hate and spite, because other advisors in this city have spoken out against the golf course at that park and rec board. We should just sell everything and let it grow over. And I mentioned this last week that we as citizens of Maslin deserve better representation and yeah. legislature or city council or whomever should change how those appointments are made to the park and rec board. Because those men are not in your favor or anybody's favor. They allotted $12,000 to a guy that night for a softball diamond on the west side or wherever it was because he had deemed it unsafe. And, and I wanted to ask, well, did you even go out and look at it? And they, were, they said that the $50,000 allotted to them by city council to begin the cost of cutting. The reason that was because at 51, then you have to do all that outbidding with sealed bids. At least city council was trying to get the trees fixed in the parks. But yet, we don't care about children because the $65,000 to hire someone down here for full management. Living here for 20 years and ho hosting 15 years of golf tournaments and outings here, this is a fabulous piece of real estate. It's a multi-million dollar piece of real estate that I think can make money for the city. Even though you say and people believe, and I'm part of that as well, hiring down the debt is going to be difficult. But it's like a mortgage. In 15 years from now, the city is going to own this thing. If it's managed correctly with the Band-Aid budget that these park and rec board guys allow, because T to green, this is as good as any course except Brookside and Stark County. Sand traps are horrible, and there's a reason why. Cart paths are deplorable, there's a reason why. Parking lots deplorable, there's a reason why. But T to green. But I've heard too many horror stories the last couple years that, that they have a full-time chef down here to watch hand, the hot dogs turn. They run out of hot dogs during a, an outing. They have to run over to Walmart to buy them. It needs more than to be micromanaged. You need these people with it here, hire them, get them in, because what can happen down here to our neighbors and to myself can happen to any neighbor. Whether Sixth Ward wants to see this close or not, because Mr. Wolf lives in the Sixth Ward, and he wants to protect the parks on that side, and he's vehemently going out against a, a candidate that's running for six Ward that she had stated she wanted to close Wampler. The 30 parks we have, the state commissions have stated it's probably too many for the size of our city, and it's probably hard to sell those off. I understand that. But with the three vibrant neighborhoods that surround this particular real estate, a lot of property tax and income tax has come into the coffers of Maslin. And yes, you're correct. We are. We want to protect our property values, but that's no different than the guy on the sixth ward wanting to protect his property value next to a park. What makes me discouraged is that these men on this park board, how they're appointed. And I think a better way would be, how can we change how that appointment is made? Whether we have to, as a city council, as the mayor, change Ohio Revised Code and make those elected officials. Because then I think they would be more receptive more polite, more gracious, instead of yelling back at people when we, when we spoke out that we need the golf course to be. Because they're on record as saying they don't care. In fact, Mr. Hickey is on record, he has voted no on anything with the legend's names attached to it. It could have been, hey, the legend's got a new ordinance, they're gonna give a million dollars to the park and rec. Except he would closure. vote, huh? except, closure. except closure for that. He would vote no on anything except closure. They don't have an open mind. They're not progressing the city. And the fact that we as citizens, we want to progress the city. And if you're willing to do this and, and say this and micromanage it and get this to where it's going to be, then that's progress. And I appreciate that. And I am one person who wants progress. It's time not to blame past administration for anything. It's time to move forward. What can we do in the future to help the city grow, to bring more people into the city, whether it's jobs or by coming to the golf course? And I think that's what we as homeowners down here want and we would appreciate from the city administration, you as the head, all the way to city council. I understand that completely. Thank you very much. I, I don't mean to get long-winded, but... <laughs> well, I can I tell you, though. <laughs> Sorry. You have to understand when people ask me, how did it get to this point? You have to go back to the past. You know, so it is appropriate to explain that. 
but you have to move forward. And we could have moved forward 18 months ago, uh, but there were two people on council, there were, one wasn't even on there at the time, just adamant that they wanted to write the mayor out and put council in. And as you can see, those papers that are going around, that's exactly what happened. Where you see council and all those lines, the mayor was there before, and they took it out, which created this huge debacle. Um, so, and you know what, Mr. Blue, it's not a political stunt. Um, you know, all I needed to hear was that I was in charge. I've been waiting to hear that I'm in charge. And as soon as we did that, um, I told Doug <coughs> we were going to be hiring two people as uh, managers here, and they were going to be able to run this golf course. And he did select two great people. Yes, sir. Will those two people report to you or to Doug? They'll report to Doug, but I'm going to be overseeing everything they do. And they'll be in constant contact with me. Um, so, but there's great things. In fact, I've already called them today to say we need mulch and flowers out front. Um, you know, if we're going to have a golf course, we need to look like one. And uh, yes, sir. I have a question. Now that you're in charge, how do you propose to control Mr. Elam, who is out of control? It's like a runaway freight train about this golf course. All right. Uh, Freddie, Freddie and I go way back, and um, I highly respect Judge Elam. Is that, is that who you're speaking about? Yes. Okay. Um, Judge Elam is a lover of the parks, and um, and that's all I can say is he has his opinion as well. I'm going to support him, and but I am going to help with this legends, and that's what I can tell you. I'm not going to get into personalities. I'm not going to throw the judge under the bus. I'm not going to do that. I, I respect him. Uh, he goes out and picks up trash and throws it away. He recycles everything. He is a great steward here in our community, so I'm not going to throw him under the bus or talk badly about him. But I will tell you what I will do, and that is I will help this legend become successful. Mr. Castro, I've got a question for you. What qualifies you to do that? You know, Mr. S, I'm not answering your questions this evening. Why? Because I'm not. I, I'm qualified because I'm the mayor. So that doesn't. That's not a qualifying thing. Why wouldn't you go for a manager that would be qualified? We have two qualified managers. No, I'm talking about where, we, where you roadblock city council. Why did you roadblock city council I'm not to get that? that question, Mr. Anybody else have a question? Why? He has. Yeah. Why? Why? Why didn't you answer it? He has. He has a right to ask questions. No, it's a political question, Sandy, and. You know, I'm a citizen. I, I'm no, I have the right to no, ask you've been bad mouthing me for weeks. Um, I will tell you, Sandy. I'll be happy to answer your question. Uh, the reason why we are not hiring a sixty-five thousand uh, dollar job person for this position is because Doug just about makes that. It may be a little bit more. Uh, we're not going to put in eighty-five thousand dollars for this position here. We can't afford to do that. And I think I can get the same quality out of Carrie and Bernie. In fact. Uh, Carrie's been giving lessons here. Uh, she's been having clinics here. She does an outstanding job. And uh, so why don't you give her an opportunity to show what she can do before we criticize her. And Bernie's also a very good person to be here. I, mean, I agree with that. I agree that they are both very, very qualified. But is Doug qualified? I'm not going to talk about personnel. Okay. Um, but I will talk about uh, working with them to make this successful. Okay. That's fair. Yes, sir. They passed an ordinance um, last year, I guess, about golf carts, Perfect. personal golf carts, but then allowed us to use our personal golf carts till the end of the year, and now they're enforcing that. So, what is like that? What is that doing to all of you when you can't use your golf carts? Tell me what that means for you. Well, for me, and I've been and I've been using my own golf cart but paying to use the, the uh, courses golf cart uh, for, for as long as you sold memberships. So I've got a golf cart sitting in my garage that all of a sudden I can't use. And you know, I, I come up here, I uh, you know, use your golf cart. And, and actually I am paying for the use of your golf cart but using my own. So it's really a, you know, it's a benefit to the course so what and to the you like city. To do? You'd like to use your own? Would like to use my own. Okay. My golf cart is insured. I have an insurance certificate, just like a car. Okay. And so they passed the legislation to say, no, you cannot. They did, they, they did. And 
you know, I got to add that last year I had already paid my membership. And so I think you and I talked, we talked about it at one point. But also I talked to Mr. Nist about it. And they decided rather than um, paying my money back last year for my membership, that, you know, we could go ahead and extend that till the end of the year. Is that a but, problem for a lot of residents, golf carts? Yeah, it's yes. only a handful, it's probably a handful of people. How many would you say? Well, there's, okay. about, there's about 20 golf carts in the neighborhood and I think 10 are members. Okay, so do you ride those on the street? Mm -hmm. Yes, and we're allowed. You are? Mm -hmm. Yes. As long as we're going, not, not just for local use, but as long as we're coming to the golf course. Is that in your homeowners? Yes. Okay. And I checked with the state of Ohio. Okay. On a golf course community, you're allowed to drive it to the, up from your house to the golf course, and no problems. But it's just like your commitment to, to get that back. I mean, right now, it's sort of like they just ripped something out from us, okay. not abusing it. And, and actually, you know, I have been, it's really been a, a benefit for the golf course, but. I could tell when I talked to Doug last year, and again, I don't want to get some personal thing, but I could tell, I explained it to him that, you know, when you're doing something like that, you're really, really causing problems with these homeowners. And so it was like a silence when we talked about it, so we could tell that that's, really that was something that was just, you know, okay. jabbing a little sword into us. We'll work through that. Okay. Great. Yes. The last two weeks I've had to run a golf cart from the Legends. And on the bottom of the receipt, it says right there that the legends or the city, I'm, I'm not, I didn't memorize what it says, but they're relieved of all liability. I, as the renter, assume all the responsibility. If I wreck it, I pay for the card. If I hurt somebody, I pay for their bills. And it says right on the receipt. What's the difference if I rent it or use my own? Okay. At least I got insurance when I use my own. I'm covered. So everybody would be willing to share your insurance if... Um, we would reverse that. Absolutely. 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 Okay. What else? Speaking on that fact, Madam Mayor, uh, with the golf cart use. Oh. Thank you, Joel. If, if the, uh, the homeowners have a golf cart at other practices at golfing communities, if I can say that about this, is that you can use your own personal golf cart and that they do, they do assess you a cart fee. But it's, it's not like renting the golf cart for 18 holes. It costs $44 on the weekend for 18 holes, and 10 of that goes to the uh, use of, of the Legends golf cart. You can assess them a cart path fee that would less than that, and that also helps maintain the cart path as well. And I'm sure that these people who have golf carts wouldn't mind paying just five bucks or whatever it is to use that instead of getting charged the fee to use their own golf cart because okay. that's happened in the past. Okay. What else? What else is a concern? Burning topic that, yes? Do you feel that the $780,000 carryover in the park and rec department is enough money to take care of those 30 parks? and the senior center and whatever else is needed for this city without the legends draining that fund? Uh, the carryover would not, no. You need all the money from, and I'll show you the real estate for in the state of the city, what go, or the uh, park tax, what goes to the park, so you can see how much it is. Uh, I believe it's about 2.5 million. So would that money, that carryover help to take care of the parks. Oh, because that's what, some we of them. Hear, yeah. that's what we hear at the Park and Rec Board that they don't have money to take care of these parks, these yeah. 30 parks. Yeah. No, there's, uh, and they need to budget that. Uh, they, we have a 20 year vehicle replacement plan that we just put into place that includes a park and rec so they can turn their vehicles over um, in a timely fashion so that they're always reliable and safe. Uh, so they do need to purchase vehicles. There's a lot of things that need to have happen. Um, playground equipment, uh, you know, we had vandalism in Shriver Park. We worked so hard on it last year with the pool project and then someone turfed the yard. So, um, so there's a lot of things that are unexpected, but, uh, you know, they should be able to do that. They are also outsourcing, I believe, eight parks to be mowed now uh, to a company. Uh, you probably heard that the other night at the Park and Rec Board meeting. That's helpful because it takes a lot of stress off the employees. We don't have that many mowers anymore. 
people that mow anymore. Uh, so it's stressful for, for them to get all these parks mowed and to make them look nice. And so uh, I think that, you know, the 780 is helpful to try to get them up to par. We just created a uh, contract with Stark Parks to take care of our trails. That was very important to do. Uh, they're the experts at the trails and we're trying to maintain them and we don't have the expertise there. So working with Stark Parks and that's a 99 year lease uh, with them. So we needed to reach out to our, our county and, and get some help there. So we've done that. One more thing too on our uh, roads and I realize there's no easy solution for this but our roads are just uh, very bad right now. Yeah. I know it's probably all over the city, but some probably really dangerous parts of our roads. You know, there might be some, there's literally some chuck holes in there that are really going to be. Yeah, well, those should all mostly be repaired now. Um, Lee McBride and his staff is working very diligently. We took the main roadways first, and now they're back in residential areas. So if you have some, you just need to text me. Uh, call me, call the office, and I'll get him out there. If there's, you know, terrible holes, we need to get them built. If you just, if you get a chance, just drive around, maybe, you know, out through Augusta, and go around to Cypress and come back. Yours is different. You'll experience them Yours all. is different. You've well, got know, cement I, streets. So right. your, yours is a bit different. So uh, a little bit harder uh, to correct. Um, but you know we can do that as well. But they'll get to it. Uh, but right now they're really focused on getting these big chuckles, and most of those have been accomplished. He's done a really nice job. Okay. It's going to be. A, have, has anyone seen this? Yes. Kathy, I have a question. Sure. Does the Park and Recreation Board keep separate books for the golf course and for the for the Parks Department? Um, what we are having them do is they're going, you know, some of you are business uh, people, you know what a profit and loss is. We're having them give us that for every single event. So we want to see if they've lost money, if they've made money. And then if they have lost money, then we need to increase our prices or do something different. So we're going to be looking at every single event that they have. take the opportunity to introduce to you our new safety and service director. Uh, this is Joel Smith. He's retired from the State Highway Patrol and uh, I can't tell you how pleased I am to have him join our team. Uh, Joel has spent many, many years um, in the Highway Patrol uh, and then also in administration. And Joel, you want to say a few words about yourself? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? <Yeah. laughs> I am Joel Smith. I just started with uh, the mayor's office on Monday. Mm -hmm. Extremely happy to be back here in Maslin. I'm a graduate from Maslin High School. I have three grandkids in the Maslin schools. I'm sorry. I'm a graduate from Maslin High School. I have three grandkids in the Maslin schools right now. Two of my children, son and a daughter, live here in town. So I have a strong background for Maslin. 
As she said, I did retire from the Highway Patrol in January of this year after 32 years. The last 12 of those years, I was a district supervisor for the Highway Patrol and oversaw all of Northeastern Ohio. Uh, that would include nine Highway Patrol posts that those post commanders answered to me. My background is administration with the patrol, and I guess I bring that background to this job as an administrative assistant to the mayor to help us run our, uh, our divisions within the city. Uh, and certainly I don't have the expertise in some of those divisions to know all the answers, but to help with the, um, the administration part of it and help the directors in whatever way I can and advise the mayor on those safety issues that are obviously important to all of us. So that's really the reason I'm here. Um, thank you. Okay, so are you ready? We're going to dim the lights a little bit. Okay, so by law, I have to give the state of the city to city council, and typically that occurs on the first Monday in January, the first meeting. What I have decided to do, uh, because of the, the uh, debt, the $2.6 million of debt that uh, was left, uh, I decided to give it to all of our staff. Um, every department and I've gone to the police department three different times every year fire department so I could hit all the shifts as well as all the other departments so I really feel it's important that they understand where the city was where the city is and where we're going um, so every year I give this to City Council and last year I gave it to neighborhood associations as well and I'll do that again this year uh, this is probably I bet I've done this 25 times now so um, this is just saying that I have to give it to city council by law. These are all your council people, um, and they are all up for re-election either in the primary or the general this year. These are other elected officials, and these are our directors. The newest director here is Frank Silla. Bill Kraft retired from the building department, and Frank worked underneath him, so it's a natural move to move him up. And uh, then we hired a gentleman underneath him. Uh, the other newest member is Ali McBride, and he's our street superintendent, and he has done a fabulous job. I, I'm sure you'll agree with the snow plowing this year and also filling all these potholes. So we're gonna first talk about the general fund deficit reduction. When I became mayor and was sworn in, uh, we knew there was some debt, but what happened was uh, bills were left unattended to on desks of the directors. So as Ken and I gathered them all up and added them up, it came to about $2.6 million, a little over $2.6 million of unpaid bills. We also started with $416.79 in the checkbook. That's all we had. Very small amount of money to run a city on. Um, most cities, just so you have a comparison, most cities have several million dollars to start with we had $416.79. The first year, we took a few items to city council and they didn't want to do them. Uh, fairness to them, there were some new members on council and so they really need, it's a huge learning curve that first year when you become a council member. So in fairness to them, uh, they declined. Uh, but we told them how urgent, how important their votes would be on these items. We also told them that when the cities have money, it's easy to get along. When cities don't have money, everybody starts to point the finger. And we really need to try to stay together. Uh, as you know, uh, that hasn't happened the way we'd liked it to. So the first year we took two items um, to city council, they said no. Uh, we had to downsize on our uh, police and fire department as well as our street department. Uh, about 34 people total, and that was huge. Uh, about 10% of our workforce. Uh, we only saved 200,000 that first year because as you know, when you downsize, you still have to pay unemployment. And so you don't really make up the savings until later. The second year, uh, you can see we are down to 1.1 million. And in January this year, we eliminated the debt. And a lot of things uh, went into play for that to occur. We're gonna talk about the general fund and there's different funds in our city government, there's a park and rec fund, there's a wastewater treatment fund, and there's the general fund. Uh, there's other funds, but those are just some uh, of the uh, typical funds that we utilize. In the general fund, 
The budget was balanced in 2012, and by law, we have to balance the budget. The budget was balanced in 2013. By law, we have to balance the budget. 2014, the budget was balanced. And we plan on balancing it this year. Uh, our money that we plan to spend has all been certified for 2015. We did make continued progress uh, by really watching our spending. Um, all of the department directors just could not go and buy once their budget was passed. They had to come to our office and uh, either the safety director or myself signed off on every purchase. As in previous years, the progress made was achieved with discipline spending, as I said, increased income tax collections, and the receipt of new and one-time sources of funds. The inheritance tax last year, uh, you probably all realize in 2013, the inheritance tax was eliminated. But last year, we brought in almost $500,000. And those uh, dollars came from estates that were not yet settled. AT&T refund. When I came into office, a young lady came to me and said she brought this to the attention of the former administration that we could save money on AT&T bills. We said, how can we do that? She said, you have lines that you're paying for that aren't hooked up. You have lines that uh, are bogus lines. So we hired her and she recouped, this is just one of them, $89,000. We paid her 25% and we kept the rest. Workers' Comp Refund uh, Rebate. Uh, they gave us money back because they're changing the way they bill on Workers' Comp. So that was part of our $785,000 carryover this year. So we saved this workers' comp, as, and as you know, if you came to council the other night, we're going to be appropriating that money to pay ahead now. And so we didn't spend it, we saved it because we knew this was coming. And then everyone is paying a streetlight utility fee of $25. And that fee is spread out amongst all of our residents, business owners as well as residents uh, that have a house or door structure pays $25, which is about $6 a quarter. Our electric bill uh, for our lights is about um, three to $400,000. So we did assess, should we turn our lights off? Uh, should we take some out? What should we do? We brought the electric company in, First Energy, and they said it's $50 to shut a light off. It's $50 to turn it back on. And if we don't turn it back on within two years, it's $200 to take it out. And when you do that, your crime goes up. So we decided that wasn't the route we wanted to take. So in order to keep everyone safe, we brought forward a proposal for $25, which is about $6 a quarter. Where do we pay that? You pay it on your sewer bill. Oh, okay. Excuse me. This is our general fund revenue. And the whiz is in here with the budget numbers. This is, this is all for you. The income tax in 14, we brought in $13 million. In 13, or 12, yes, 13, we brought in 12.7. So we had an increase of about 3.4%. That's pretty good. Our local government funds, those are the funds we get from the state. They're down about 46% from 2011. So uh, this past year, it only went down about 10,000. But overall, it's significant. That we uh, and so when that happens, they, the 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 state doesn't say this is how you make up that amount. You just have to figure it out. Figure out how you're going to make up almost five hundred thousand dollars. Real estate rollback tax is really no change. The inheritance tax. You can see in thirteen we received three hundred thirty-eight thousand, and in fourteen four hundred ninety-seven, uh, and they eliminated it in two thousand and thirteen. This year, we're not expecting, uh, we've budgeted zero all the years, but we're not expecting any money in, but something could trickle in from an estate that's still outstanding. The um, FEMA grant, this is what I kept preaching to council about how important this FEMA grant is. When we downsized our fire department and we took away 10 officers, uh, the chief and I, uh, he said, I can bring those guys back. Um, and before we laid off, we also applied for the FEMA grant and we were denied. Uh, we were denied because they were looking for cities that were struggling. So when we downsized, we reapplied and we were successful in bringing all 10 firefighters back for a two year period. We continued and wrote another 12 month grant 
and we're able to keep three veteran firefighters working through this October. If you lay off or do any kind of downsizing in that time, uh, you're at risk for paying it back. So we didn't want to be in that position, so we really wanted to protect, protect the FEMA grant. And you can see it was $715,000 last year. So Other revenue, I'm sorry, is that just firemen? Just firemen. Not, not police. We applied for police, but our statistics weren't high enough to re okay. be able to receive it. Now, Canton received it, uh, but our statistics weren't high enough. Gotcha. So you need more crime. <laughs> it sounds that way, doesn't it? Um, and so the total for 14 was $20 million, about 4% increase. So that's uh, very good numbers. Here's where another slide that just kind of shows you the decrease of the local government funds. So we, we in 2010, we are almost a million dollars down to 517,000. And again, tell you, figure out how you're gonna make that up. Income tax collections, here's our parks and rec. Um, the general fund again is the same. The capital improvement, when I came on council, we were able to spend a lot more money on capital improvement, like for our roads. Um, but when the economy started to turn, we needed to react, and that didn't happen. Um, in fact, we gave out a 4% raise in 2010, and they hired 11 people in 2011. You can't do that. You have to react to the situation, and that didn't happen. Um, so we really should be spending a lot more in capital improvement dollars. But because of our financial situation, we can't. We have to be very careful with how we spend our money. Our Parks and Rec Department, you can see, is up by 2.7%, uh, brought in about 100,000 more, maybe 80,000 more um, from 2013. And a total for all tax collections is about 15.9. Any questions on that? So the Moody's bond rating. So when I came into office, um, we talked about when I was on council the last quarter about refinancing the senior high-rise Duncan place. And all of a sudden they said, we're not gonna refinance, which I just didn't understand why we weren't doing that. But I figured it out when I became the mayor. The reason we didn't refinance is because Moody's was going to downgrade our rating. And so they wanted to wait for it to be me to get the downgrade. Um, but we had to. We had to refinance, and I'll tell you why. We were spending about $300,000 a year on the senior high-rise. We should not be in the senior high-rise business, but we are. So we refinanced that um, so that we could keep firemen and policemen working. Had we not done that, it, we saved about, you well, know, our payment today is 130000 approximately. We were paying about 300000 I consider about 65000 for a policeman or a fireman, give or take a little bit of money. Um, and so we needed to keep more people working, so we had to refinance. The interest rates were the same, and um, so it wasn't really the interest rate that was the reason. It was because Moody's was gonna downgrade our rating. And so, uh, and they did. Um, what they said was, and this is not the mayor saying it, this is Moody's. Just like Experian, uh, Experian or Equifax, one of those credit rating companies for you personally, Moody's does the cities, okay? so. They said that prior to 2012, the city had not been living within its budget, having depleted general fund reserves after five consecutive years of operating deficits. Failure to control spending resulted in a downgrade of the city's bond rate. So in March of 20, uh, 20th of 2012, uh, when we refinanced the senior high rise to control our cash, um, they gave us a B double A one with a negative outlook from an A one. We were at an A one <clears throat> because City Council failed to give us more money. They're saying you need more money to run this city. Moody's downgraded us further to a B A one and maintain the negative outlook. And this is all stated in Moody's rating. This is not the mayor just bashing you know other people. This is stated by Moody's. October 8th, 2000, 2013, the state auditor declares our city in fiscal emergency. Now, I've heard people say, oh, the mayor did that. She put us in fiscal emergency. <coughs> There's no truth to that. There's only one person out of the entire state of Ohio that can place the city in fiscal emergency, and that's the auditor of state. 
Not, not any mayor can do that. December 22nd, excuse me. I have a letter here that on, let's see, in August of 2011, you requested the auditor of the state to put the city in fiscal emergency at that point. No, that's not true. It's in the letter here. I'd like to see it. If you can see it, I'll be glad to show it to you. And this letter is dated October 26, 2011, which is the couple last months when my husband was in office. And at this point, this letter says that the city does not qualify for any of the six. Oh, no, I didn't ask the, I asked them to come in and look at our city. You wanted them to declare a state no, of emergency. No, I didn't say that. Okay, it's in the letter. Didn't no. they originally say no, the state auditor? Yes. The first there, time. They didn't qualify. No, there are, there are reasons why that happens, uh, Mrs. Chickenham. Right, there are reasons. We didn't qualify any of them. No, no, the that's, there there's not true. Uh, you have to get to a certain point. So because a city doesn't, because a city doesn't make their budget, does not, in, bio, in, uh, uses deficit spending, does not automatically throw you in fiscal emergency. There are criteria that you have to meet to throw you into caution, watch, or fiscal emergency. But by law, you are have to balance your budget. And so I said to the state, why in the world do you let it get to this point before you put a city in fiscal emergency? There's, there's no you know, slapping of the hand when you deficit spend. There should be some kind of mechanism in place, and there isn't. So they wait till it gets astronomical, and that's when they put you in. That's why. And you can ask the state auditor themselves. You can, we have liaisons. You can ask our uh, Office of Budget, Budget Management Chairperson, Sharon Hanrahan. She'll tell you all that. Uh, but you are supposed to balance your budget. And what we said to the state was, something's not right here. Please come look. Something's not right. And Obviously, it wasn't because we were placed in fiscal emergency very shortly thereafter. So now, because City Council gave us a tax credit reduction and because they gave us the street light utility fee, the revenue came up. And we had a face-to-face -face meeting with Moody's. We thought, thought it was that important for them to get to know our city personally. We brought them out here to meet with us. And we said, our city is trying. We're trying very hard. We've done this. We did this. Our employees were paying zero towards their medical premium. And we uh, now have them helping to pay towards that at 15%. That's a hard pill to swallow for our employees when you're used to paying zero. We would have really liked to have stepped it. 7%, 12%, 15%. We didn't have that luxury because we didn't have any money. So we had to figure out ways to do that. And so that was one of the areas that we saved. There were people that worked for um, the department directors that had uh, secured um, overtime, no matter if they worked it or not, every payday. We got rid of that. If you're a salary employee as a director, you will work until the job is done. Every hospital I've worked at on, on, on salary, I didn't get paid extra or overtime if I worked extra hours. I worked until the job was done. So we got rid of all the automatic overtime for some department heads. Uh, we took their cars away from them. I mean, we really tried to pull in to save money. It wasn't easy. It was very difficult. Um, kind of back to the high rise a little bit. Does it not, don't people pay rent to live there? I guess I'm kind of confused. Let me tell you about the senior high rise. Okay. So the senior high rise, the gentleman that was in charge of it, managing it, was collecting the rents. He was giving the city some money, but not all the money. And so then when I came in, uh, we took him to court and because he wasn't really paying us. So the court said, you have to give the city $9,000 every month. So he did that for three, four, five months. We'd have to go back and check for sure. And then he stopped paying, and he was putting the money in his pocket. So we have senior high rise, ceilings caving in. We have air conditioners for our seniors that don't work. And so we took and put that in receivership. So now Tim Putman is in charge of that. He collects the rents. And right now, we're allowing him to get the senior high rise back up to standard because some of these ceilings in there were actually um, atrocious. 
and we're getting those repaired, getting air conditioners working again, and some of these seniors are disabled, and so that's not fair to them. Uh, and so that's where that is. Do we want that? No, we want to get it to share sale and get somebody else to manage it. The city does not need to be in that business. And you don't see where it's going to make enough money to pay your bond? No. Probably don't know. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I'll keep going. Economic development and jobs. So our, our income tax is up. Uh, we worked very hard. The first year I was in office, I visited 52 businesses to let them know how important they are to our city uh, because their health keeps our, our city healthy. Um, and then we've also, this number 717 is um, low. We're over 800 jobs we've had since I've been here and we've retained <coughs> over 700 jobs. Uh, and that was a lot of um, Collaboration with Stark Development Board, the state of Ohio, Larry Marcus, Ted Hurricane. We worked very hard to make that happen. The Heinz Company was being courted by many states. We kept them here in Maslin. Uh, we, we are going to retain 450 jobs, 249 new jobs over three years, and they put in $28 million into their building. Team Midwest, when I came in, said, nobody cares if we're here, we're going to Dalton. And we said, we do care if you're here. We helped them find a place to build, and they have a 10,000 square foot building, two new positions added, and we retained 18 jobs. And it's right behind Young's Car Wash, if you're wondering where that's at. Campbell Oil, if you've been out on Hills and Dales, they have a fabulous new uh, corporation uh, headquarters, and um, it's beautiful. I've had the opportunity to tour it, and it's state of the art. Bueller's open on the northwest side. That was a really hot um, topic about what, where are people going to go on the west side for groceries. Well, Bueller's came into town, a nice community uh, grocery store. Shears Food is expanding again, um, a 20,000 square foot building, a $1.8 million project. Danbury of Masson, as you know, is building right over here, the old Ashton University. It's going to be a independent living all the way up to an Alzheimer's unit. And uh, I know the inn is very busy as well, and they do have the same capabilities, but uh, our baby boomer population is growing, and that seems to be a niche uh, for our senior care. Baker Hughes invested $14 million into our um, city, and over 100 employees now. PSC Metals chose Maslin, $25 million investment, 26 new jobs to Maslin. We're working with Steve DiPietro on the Republic Steel site. He uh, bought part of the rail over there and he's using it for a pipe yard at this time. Uh, we have big plans for that property and we're working on that with Steve. All of these are new businesses downtown, plus we also have the second Saturday. If you've not participated, it's a it's very similar to the First Friday. It's not as big as Canton's First Friday, but it is very nice. And uh, we have bands downtown, and um, we hope that you'll join us some Saturday. Very important to connect our businesses. We've connected um, Tower Industries to Stark State. We connected Bob Gessner. I had an uh, inquiry on a building from Stark Summit Ambulance and asked Bob if he would buy it for a tenant. And he said, I'll buy it, but I need it for myself. Um, and so he utilized that building. But we really try to connect people. Uh, tomorrow I'm bringing a gentleman downtown to look at the first floor of the McClymans building. Um, and they already have another tenant in the back of the McClymans building. So we're working very hard on our downtown as well. Here's where we approved for um, the Nature Preserve, 75 acres, and we're working with Stark Parks. So. Uh, that's the Cottrell property, and that's uh, beneficial for Stark Parks. We are not going to have, with the 30 parks we have and the legends, we're not going to have the time to really do what we could do with that area, but Stark Parks will have the time. It is a 99-year lease. Other highlights for the city? We did do the levee infrastructure project. It's something you can't see, but we needed to do it underneath the river. 9th Street, um, in order to retain businesses here, those businesses that give us those solid income tax dollars, we redid 9th Street. Hankins Avenue, uh, really nice project, and we even put in a little uh, crosswalk for the residents there. 
Projects for 15, the only poor rated bridge we have is the Sippo Bridge on 17th Street, excuse me, the 17th Street Bridge. And we're also going to be resurfacing. It's an ODOT project from um, 17th Street down. They're gonna finish that. And that's why we haven't done anything with those catch basins is because that's all in the project, all the way down to 3rd Street on Lincoln Way. And of course, a $23 million uh, wastewater treatment plant upgrade. Now, Navarre, we believe, is about out of capacity. And so that upgrade is very important to help recruit more businesses to our city. And so it's vital that we do this besides the EPA has mandates that we have to comply with. All over the city, the infrastructure is crumbling, and we have replaced uh, by this spring over 200 of these catch basins. Every metal plate we have is out. Uh, you'll see cones, you'll see horses. They're working diligently on these, but all of the infrastructure is crumbling at the same time. How do, you, how do we fix these right now? We pay $12, you all pay a dollar a month to help with these storm uh, catch basins. Our winter, uh, two, two years in a row, very, very hard on the streets. We spent uh, quite a bit of money last year and a thousand tons of asphalt. Um, this year, it's much worse than last year. Last year we had potholes. This year we have stretches of road. And not uh, just Masson, but the city of Canton, Akron, Cleveland, everybody's seeing a change in the way our roads are deteriorating this year. I know Mayor Healy's going to uh, meet um, with the federal government. We've been working with Scott Olslager to talk with the state about our roads. Um, and I just emailed him the other day to say, where are we, if they had any response at all, and no response from the director at this time. So we're still waiting to see uh, if they have any monies for us uh, from the state or federal government. The building department um, is really doing a great job. Uh, the governor talked about partnering and um, job, you know, sharing resources. We are already doing that. We do Canal Fulton's building permits. Um, we've already doubled our fees from one year to the next. Um, and 41 housing starts in the city, $5.3 million. So you know the economy is coming back. Uh, four commercial permits at 2.3 and 27.2 million dollars in property improvements, which tells you that people want to be in our city. They're reinvesting in their homes. They want to be here. Total revenue for our uh, building department is up by 13%. We are out of the hotel business. This is a one um, item that I really focused on to get done for our city. Um, I was one that would vote no on uh, the HUD loan uh, that we had to repay back, uh, Section 108 loan. And we were able to get $1.4 million from the company and we were able to recoup the $2.2 million uh, that we had spent uh, on our share. Now, they did get an interest-free loan, um, but you had to cut your losses. And those of you that are in business, you know there's a point where you have to cut your losses, and that's what we did. What was most important about this is the monies that are from CDBG are federal dollars. We get to use for our target streets, for our not-for-profit businesses, and we had a $900,000 balloon payment in 2019. What was most important about that is we had no way to pay for it. Uh, we get about $500,000 to $600,000 in CDBG funds every year. So you can see we are going to have to take one full year plus a half a year to make that $900,000 balloon payment. There was no way we could do that and do the things that we need to do for our city. That's why it was vital to get out of this hotel business which we are out of. It freed up about 50,000 this year in our community block grant dollars and about 50,000 next year. After this year and next year our payment, it's completely done, we're done. The money that they gave us is in an escrow account and they'll take away that until 19. So this is off of our plate, uh, this problem has been solved. Progress report on the senior apartments. Uh, I told you earlier, somebody asked a question, this is the same one where we refinanced it and we're able to control our cash and we do have a receiver in place. The cool project, this is our third year for the cool project. Um, the first year we were in Southwest uh, part of Maslin. Uh, last year we were in the Southeast part of Maslin and this year we're going to be in Wellman neighborhood. Uh, and this is where a bunch of uh, 
volunteers come together and let's see, it was 1,800 last year, uh, 26 different churches all around the county. This year it's just Maslin churches. That's a little change. And you can, if you'd like to sign up and participate, it's a lot of fun. It's all on one day, June 6th. We start about eight in the morning, we're done around four, and you just work on a, a home in the Wellman neighborhood. Uh, this year, Rotary again is uh, participating, and um, you can sign up with Rotary or any of the churches. To register, it's $15 at cooldays.org. You get a t-shirt, and it's really a neat thing to see when you drive up the street and you're parking, and all you see is all these same colored t-shirts, and they're all there to bless that area. It really is neat. If you've not participated and you'd like to, uh, cooldays.org. Last year, we worked on Schreiber Park. Um, Vasco donated a new basketball court surface. Uh, the advanced industrial roofing put a new pavilion roof on um, the pavilion at Shriver. The overgrowth was removed by Enviroscapes, and they had new shrubberies donated from local nurseries. We did put up new signage, and we did improve the restaurants. Um, and then, of course, you heard me say that someone turfed the, the park. Um, so we need to take care of our parks, and, uh, and that's what we're trying to do. Where is Shriver Park? Shriver Park? Is that what you just talked about with Shriver Park? Do you know where Erie is? Erie Street? Yeah. Um, and do you know where Shriver is? If you go up Shriver off of Erie, it's right there. So like down. It's right there. Oh, okay. If you go oh, right okay. out through the woods here, it's right there. Right oh, across. Right. oh, okay. Um, summer concerts. Uh, when I started, well, I had zero money for summer concerts, and one person did want me to have them. A council member said, don't do it. Let people know we're poor. And I couldn't do that. I just couldn't do that. And so uh, I went to the businesses and um, talked with Ron Fraley, and he's helped me with that. He's really a buff, uh, music buff. And um, we were able to uh, bring in about $70,000 that first year from businesses. So no taxpayer dollars went into this, um, and we were able to provide concerts for our residents and our visitors. Uh, this year we're adding one concert on. Um, we've been lucky to have the businesses give back every single year um, and large amounts, and so we're going to do that again. And then, of course, Monday night concerts. And we've got a lot of Monday night concerts planned, a few more than we usually do. We also get a little bit of a grant from the Music Federation, and um, that helps to pay for them as well. Arthur Genshaft, um, this is a $1 million makeover. You probably have seen that down by Walmart. Anybody play softball? Uh, when I was on council, they were going to put a Kohl's here. Do you all remember that in the newspaper? Uh, Kohl's is great. Uh, love their blankets. But um, I voted yes on this, as a matter of fact, because I was told that the family supported this. After I won the primary, I met with Mr. Genshaft and asked him about the Kohl's. And he said, no, the family did not support that, but they didn't want to have any kind of negativity in the paper, so they just kept quiet. And so he said, well, what do you want to do with it? And I said, well, now that I know that you are in support of it, I'm only to approve it. So we gave him an a la carte list with some pricing on the side and said, Mr. Genshaw, what would you like to do? And he said, I'll do all of it. And so he's the one that did all of that. We transferred the deed back to Mr. Genshaw. We applied restrictions so that it must always remain a park, not a softball field, but a park. So that means um, if softball is gone in 20 years, it's not a, a, a big sport anymore, they can put soccer there. So it just has to remain for recreation. Um, and then they transfer the deed back after they did all the, all the improvements. And it is absolutely fabulous. Uh, really good person in our community, good businessman. And we thank Mr. Genshaf and Freshmark. On August 7th, our city became a Purple Heart City. We honored uh, about 90 Purple Heart recipients. And I hope you were able to at least read about it or, or come to the event. It was fabulous. And every two years, we're really going to have a program to uh, mark that again. And now that's all I have for you tonight. That's our update on the city. And I can take questions if you have them.
think it's really important that you know you understand where the city is and where it lies. We do have a third century of Maslin Committee. It's a really great committee. Canton has the Pro Football Hall of Fame expansion. And so we said, what does that look like for Maslin? We brought David Baker over. We sat down with John Malbach and Rick Goodright and a group of people, Phil Elam, uh, Bob Fundenning, and we talked about what does this look like for Maslin because we have Paul Brown uh, and we want to we want to utilize that. We want to capitalize on that. And, uh, and we have a great committee. Um, Dan McMasters is on there. So we have a great committee looking towards that. What does this look like for us? Recently, we just did a streetscape um, plan that was just passed by city council. We've worked on that for over a year before we were able to bring it forward. Um, but that's very exciting so that we can change uh, and brighten up and modernize a little bit our downtown. And that needs to happen. We need new trash cans. We need new flower pots. We need new hanging pots. Um, we need new sidewalks. Um, you know, we want to get rid of some of the uh, the blocks that are there. Yes, they're old and yes, they're great, but they're falling apart, and we're having to glue them back together. Uh, so I think that's very exciting. And then, of course, working with Steve DiPietro with the Republic Steel site, um, I could see us changing that on that west side, uh, adding a Starbucks over there. Know, uh, when you go down the trail, you can stop off and grab a coffee. Um, we're also going to be working on the dam from um, the river. When you travel the river and you want to use a canoe, you can only go north uh, because of the dam. So what we're going to try to do is put a weir there so you can come over the dam and go south on the river. The problem is the river's too wide, and so we need to get that river narrowed. And that's a long-term goal so that we can utilize the waterway. Years ago, it was widen those, and um, now the trend is to narrow them and actually utilize the waterways. So uh, some great aspirations uh, for our future. Um, I'm really excited about it. Uh, I think that you know, we have a lot to offer here in our city, and the, the best part about our city is our people. And uh, I'm really looking forward to working with all of you on making the legends a success. Uh, Monday night at the council meeting, you mentioned something about uh, Bridgefield Drive, something in the future on that. Comment on that? Anybody comment on that? Sure. I, we met with um, Craig Chesler, um, Keith Bennett, Neil Genshaft and his staff, um, uh, Larry Marcus, myself, Keith Gillespie, our engineer. Um, i trying to think anybody else was there. And we talked about Richville Drive because the Richville Drive, all three of us own some piece of it. The county, the township, and, and the city. And we're trying to get it on their agenda uh, to get that repaired and, and to be done correctly. And so um, we had this initial meeting. In fact, I uh, told my administrative assistant to get me a second meeting with him because I was on Richville Drive just yesterday again. And um, we, we need to step that up. It needs to be sooner than later. Um, and so we're going to try to get that on the agenda. And they plan years out, so it's not like it's going to happen next year. But we want that to get on their radar to say this truly needs done, and we need to all work on it as a collaborative effort. Yes, sir. I'm a year old base, and I live in 2095 Championship Circle. And I turn off of Richville to go to my home. When I come out, there's a sign at the top of the hill, 40 mile an hour. Why do they have that posted, that speed limit, at the top of the hill when you're trying to make a left-hand turn to go towards Fresh Mart? It's dangerous. And that used to be posted 35. I moved out there 13, that. 13 years ago. It was 35 mile an hour. Okay. I'll check on that. Uh, I think I was out at your neighbor's house, and he brought that up to me the other day. Um, I can Those tell semis you. Those do 50 mile an hour coming down that hill when they yeah. try to top that hill. Yeah. There's 100 trucks out there every day going up and down that road. Oh. And, and they're going to be more. And that's why Mr. Genshaft is expanding Freshmark. They're putting in a 30,000 square foot uh, corporate headquarters in the front of their building. And right now you can see about 80 trucks a day. It's going to double. And that's why it's so important. Well, hopefully they won't be coming down Richville only because that's not possible. Well, and that we took to city council the other day to move that turn back off the of Southway. It's too sharp, and it needs to come back so they have an easier way to turn. We need a blinker light at Championship Circle. It's a 
already that I think that are, but not this one. Mm -hmm. And I think the onus on that should be on the company. Uh, Timken has done a lot to invest in the neighboring land where my family has been employed around the farm. And I know that this company was given a tax, 10 year tax abatement, which I think is five years too much. But that being said, let's not bring business in with a 10 year tax abatement. It's well, and we've changed. Us. We've changed our philosophy um, when I came in, and what we're trying to do is not do as many of those. What we're trying to do is um, give a small amount of economic development grant, like 7,500, 6,000, 5,000. So it's a one-time uh, help to get them here to the city, but then we're done, and we're not paying for it for 10 years. And that seems to be working. And uh, we just brought Brailler's Restoration in and Columbus Equipment uh, just recently. So. Uh, we're trying to do things a little differently. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, well I appreciate your time tonight. And uh, you did, this is Larry Marcus, our Community Development Director. If you've not met Larry, he's my right hand. I'm bringing in some new businesses. And uh, so uh, thank you for your time and uh, we look forward to your suggestions.